Hey ladies and gentlemen, Stephen here from the channel Redolescence and thank you so much for tuning in. I really do appreciate your time and support and your viewership. And in today's episode, we're going to be taking a closer look at the newish release by the company Coach. This one is simply entitled Coach for Men, so stay tuned. Before I begin, I do want to mention that there is going to be a giveaway attached to this review. So in order to know what the giveaway is, please make sure to stay tuned until the end of the video where I will announce what you need to do in order to enter. Now for starters, this fragrance is a 2017 release. It is a collaboration between perfumers Anfilippo and Bruno Jovanovic, both of which have an extensive resume. You can go ahead and look them up online. And here is the newest release by this company. And I have experience with some of their other scents. I like the original Coach for Men. It was one of the greatest grapefruit fragrances that I have ever smelled. And it's a bit of a disappointment to see that it's not easy to come by nowadays. And I also really enjoyed their leatherware collection. I had a couple of friends that wore some of them. Jesse Howell, if you're watching, he's always been a big advocate for their leatherware collection. Unfortunately, those have been kind of scrapped as well. But here we have the newest iteration, and this one, a lot of people have been comparing it to Dior Sauvage and Blue de Chanel and Mr. Burberry and saying that it's one of these lighter, fresher, citrusy, easy to wear fragrances. Do I agree with them? I'm gonna let you guys know in a little bit, but let's go ahead and start things off by taking a closer look at the presentation. So here's the box for this fragrance. It kind of has like a leathery appearance and texture to it, but of course it is cardboard, nothing going on at the back, information at the bottom, UPC serial number, all that jazz. It's what you've come to expect from the standard presentation. And here we have the bottle, which I think is actually a gorgeous bottle. You have the coach insignia here on the front. You have this little faux leather tag here that just has coach engraved into it. The atomizer on this one works really, really well. I love the fade on the bottle as well, how it goes from black to uh, transparent at the bottom. And I just want to say that if you want to lock this, there's actually a mechanism where you can turn it and now you can't press down on it. Very evocative of the Bulgari man and man in black bottles. With that being said, let's go ahead and continue with the smell. Now, as soon as you spray this on, yes, it's true. Uh, it is going to be reminiscent and familiar of other fresher, lighter, more citrusy fragrances that we've seen in the designer market. I'm talking about fragrances like Blue de Chanel, Mr. Burberry Sauvage, uh, even Carvin Porom. But the thing that I have to say about this fragrance is that it actually is a closer clone to another fragrance that didn't get a lot of likes in the community, but everybody who's worn it has always told me how positive the attention that they received from it has been. This one is actually more of a clone of Gucci Guilty Black. If you've ever tried Gucci Guilty Black, the one in the green bottle that has this bright citrusy opening, and then it dries down to these sort of synthetic woods, that's kind of what you get in here. The only other connection that I would make is to, yes, Dior Sauvage. I do think with the Ambroxan or the Ambergris and that bergamot opening, it's very fresh and citrusy and inviting and it's so easy to wear, it's casual, and yes, it does actually bear resemblance to Dior Sauvage. In terms of it smelling like Blue de Chanel, I totally don't get that. Blue de Chanel is all about the incense and the grapefruit, and then Mr. Burberry is much flatter as far as its olfactory texture is concerned, or at least that's how I perceive it. This one, more of an emphasis on the citrus, and it dries down to those synthetic woods, and in my mind, that conjures up Gucci Guilty Black, which at the same time, I actually quite enjoyed. It even made my top 10 most complimented list. So in terms of a fragrance that's fresh, it's inviting, it's very easy to wear, I think this one hits all those marks. If you're looking for something complex, if you're looking for something non-linear or more non-linear than this, this is kind of non-linear in the regard that the citrus goes away. But if you're looking for something that has more work uh, drawn into it and it's defined by the presence of more ingredients or more sophisticated ingredients, then you might want to look for something else. But personally, I love this one. And I came home with four fragrances two days ago. And this was one of them. So in full disclosure, I haven't worn it for the entire week, but for all of those fragrances that I have tried and I put on, and I have been wearing this one as well, my wife says to me, this is by far the best one of the lot. And some of the other ones that I brought home were really good fragrances, clones of very popular and easy to wear fragrances, but this one definitely won it for my wife. So 
Great fragrance. I've gotten compliments a couple of times that I've worn it, and I'm very happy to have had this opportunity to uh, talk to you guys about it. So with that being said, let's go ahead and conclude with my overall assessment. In terms of the uniqueness and the overall smell, it's a slightly unique fragrance, but for the most part, it's not because it does fall in line with what other fragrances are doing in the designer realm. It's just a fresh sort of aquatic scent that dries down to some synthetic woods. It's not overly aquatic though. It is more about the ambroxan than anything. So if you're looking for like a salty nuance that some other fragrances contain, you're not gonna find that here. But the citrus in here is really good and it's so easy to wear and it's definitely a compliment getter. Longevity is where it falls a little flat. You're gonna get about four to five hours and the projection is really good for the first hour and a half because of the overabundance of those citruses. But once they die out, it does sit closer to the skin, kind of becoming an intimate scent but that's that might be uh, the occasion for which you might want to wear this in terms of versatility incredibly versatile dressed up dressed down I just think that you should wear this one in the hotter weather um, so possibly wait until springtime or summertime and you can actually wear this all year round as long as you're indoors in a climate controlled environment at the end of the day these are just recommendations and I think this one does lean a bit masculine in terms of presentation I think it's gorgeous and my final verdict on this one is I do like it. Um, I don't love it. It's not one of my favorites either, but I do like this one because it's so easy to wear and it gets me compliments. And I think Coach did a wonderful job with this one. Now, I am willing to part with a five milliliter decant and uh, I will be pinning the winner's comment to the top of this video in a week's time. So make sure to check back to this video to see if you've won. But all you need to do is leave a comment down below and tell me what is your favorite freshie? Is it Blue de Chanel? Is it Dior Sauvage? Is it Nordica Voyage? I wanna hear from you guys. Leave a comment down below. Thank you so much for tuning in. Remember to subscribe for future videos, especially if you're new to this channel. I would love to have you be a permanent part of this channel, so make sure to subscribe. Also, don't forget to enable notifications by clicking on the bell. This way you never miss any future content, including reviews, top tens, giveaways, unboxings, and a ton of other fragrance-related content. Thanks again for tuning in. Love you guys. We'll see you in the next episode. Take care.